verses 12 to 13. The short visit Christ made to Capernaum, v 12. It was a large and populous city, about a day's journey from Cana, it is called his own city, mt 9 because he made it his headquarters in Galilee, and what little rest he had was there. It was a place of concourse, and therefore Christ chose it, that the fame of his doctrine and miracles might then spread the further. Observe. The company that attended him thither, his mother, his brethren, and his disciples. Wherever Christ went, he would not go alone, but would take those with him who had put themselves under his guidance, that he might instruct them, and that they might attest his miracles. He could not go alone, but they would follow him, because they liked the sweetness either of his doctrine or of his wine, ch 626. His mother, though he had lately given her to understand that in the works of his ministry he should pay no more respect to her than to any other person, yet followed him, not to intercede with him, but to learn of him. His brethren also and relations, who were at the marriage and were wrought upon by the miracle there, and his disciples, who attended him wherever he went. It should seem, people were more affected with Christ's miracles at first than they were afterwards, when custom made them seem less strange. His continuance there, which was at this time not many days, designing now only to begin the acquaintance he would afterwards improve there. Christ was still upon the remove, would not confine his usefulness to one place, because many needed him. And he would teach his followers to look upon themselves but as sojourners in this world, and his ministers to follow their opportunities, and go where their work led them. We do not now find Christ in the synagogues, but he privately instructed his friends, and thus entered upon his work by degrees. It is good for young ministers to accustom themselves to pious and edifying discourse in private, that they may with the better preparation, and greater awe, approach their public work. He did not stay long at Capernaum, because the Passover was at hand, and he must attend it at Jerusalem, for everything is beautiful in its season. The less good must give way to the greater, and all the dwellings of Jacob must give place to the gates of Zion. The Passover he kept at Jerusalem, it is the first after his baptism, and the evangelist takes notice of all the Passovers he kept henceforward, which were four in all, the fourth that at which he suffered, three years after this, and half a year was now past since his baptism. Christ, being made under the law, observed the Passover at Jerusalem, CEX 23:17. Thus he taught us by his example a strict observance of divine institutions, and a diligent attendance on religious assemblies. He went up to Jerusalem when the Passover was at hand, that he might be there with the first. It is called the Jews' Passover, because it was peculiar to them, Christ is our Passover, now shortly God will no longer own it for his. Christ kept the Passover at Jerusalem yearly, ever since he was twelve years old, in obedience to the law. But now that he has entered upon his public ministry we may expect something more from him than before, and two things we are here told he did there. 1. He purged the temple, v. 1416. Ample, and, it should seem, he did not make any public appearance till he came thither, for his presence and preaching there were that glory of the latter house which was to exceed the glory of the former, Huggii 2 9. It was foretold. Mal 3 1 I will send my messenger, John Baptist, he never preached in the temple, but the Lord, whom ye seek, he shall suddenly come to his temple, suddenly after the appearing of John Baptist, so that this was the time, and the temple the place, when, and where, the Messiah was to be expected. The first work we find him at in the temple was the purging of it, for so it was foretold there, Mal 3 2. 3 He shall sit as a refiner and purify the sons of Levi. Now was come the time of reformation. Christ came to be the great reformer, and, according to the method of the reforming kings of Judah, he first purged out what was amiss, and that used to be Passover work too, as in Hezekiah's time, 2 Chr 30 14, 15, and Josiah's, 2 Key 23 4, etc., and then taught them to do well first purge out the old leaven, and then keep the feast. 
Christ's design in coming into the world was to reform the world, and he expects that all who come to him should reform their hearts and lives, General 35 2. And this he has taught us by purging the temple. See here. What were the corruptions that were to be purged out? He found a market in one of the courts of the temple, that which was called the court of the Gentiles, within the mountain of that house. There, first, they sold oxen and sheep and doves, for sacrifice, we will suppose, not for common use, but for the convenience of those who came out of the country, and could not bring their sacrifices in kind along with them, see do. 14 colon 24 26. This market perhaps had been kept by the pool of Bethesda, ch 5 colon 2, but was admitted into the temple by the chief priests, for filthy lucre, for, no doubt, the rents for standing there, and fees for searching the beasts sold there, and certifying that they were without blemish, would be a considerable revenue to them. Great corruptions in the church owe their rise to the love of money, 1 Tim 6 colon 5, 10. Secondly, they changed money, for the convenience of those that were to pay a half shekel in specie every year, by way of poll, for the service of the tabernacle, ex 30 colon 12, and no doubt they got by it. What course our Lord took to purge out those corruptions? He had seen these in the temple formerly, when he was in a private station, but never went about to drive them out till now, when he had taken upon him the public character of a prophet. He did not complain to the chief priests, for he knew they countenanced those corruptions. But he himself, first, drove out the sheep and oxen, and those that sold them, out of the temple. He never used force to drive any into the temple, but only to drive those out that profaned it. He did not seize the sheep and oxen for himself, did not dis terrain and impound them, though he found them damage face and actual trespassers upon his father's ground, he only drove them out, and their owners with them. He made a scourge of small cords, which probably they had led their sheep and oxen with, and thrown them away upon the ground, whence Christ gathered them. Sinners prepare the scourges with which they themselves will be driven out from the temple of the Lord. He did not make a scourge to chastise the offenders, his punishments are of another nature, but only to drive out the cattle, he aimed no further than at reformation. CROM 13 colon 3, 4, 2 co 10 colon 8. Secondly, he poured out the changers money, to Kerma the small money the numerum famulus. In pouring out the money, he showed his contempt of it, he threw it to the ground, to the earth as it was. In overthrowing the tables, he showed his displeasure against those that make religion a matter of worldly gain. Money changers in the temple are the scandal of it. Note, in Reformation, it is good to make thorough work, he drove them all out, and not only threw out the money, but, in overturning the tables, threw out the trade too. Thirdly, he said to them that sold doves, sacrifices for the poor, take these things hence. The doves, though they took up less room, and were a less nuisance than the oxen and sheep, yet must not be allowed there. The sparrows and swallows were welcome, that were left to God's providence, PS 84 colon 3, but not the doves, that were appropriated to man's profit. God's temple must not be made a pigeon house. But see Christ's prudence in his zeal. When he drove out the sheep and oxen, the owners might follow them, when he poured out the money, they might gather it up again, but, if he had turned the doves flying, perhaps they could not have been retrieved, therefore to them that sold doves he said, take these things hence. Note, discretion must always guide and govern our zeal, that we do nothing unbecoming ourselves, or mischievous to others. Fourthly, he gave them a good reason for what he did, make not my father's house a house of merchandise. Reason for conviction should accompany force for correction. A. Here is a reason why they should not profane the temple, because it was the house of God, and not to be made a house of merchandise. Merchandise is a good thing in the exchange, but not in the temple. This was, A, to alienate that which was dedicated to the honor of God, it was sacrilege, it was robbing God. B, it was to debase that which was solemn and awful, and to make it mean. C, 
it was to disturb and distract those services in which men ought to be most solemn, serious, and intent. It was particularly an affront to the sons of the stranger in their worship to be forced to herd themselves with the sheep and oxen, and to be distracted in their worship by the noise of a market, for this market was kept in the court of the Gentiles. D. It was to make the business of religion subservient to a secular interest, for the holiness of the place must advance the market, and promote the sale of their commodities. Those make God's house a house of merchandise, a. Eh? whose minds are filled with cares about worldly business when they are attending on religious exercises, as those, Amos 8 colon 5, Ease. 3331. B. Who perform divine offices for filthy lucre, and sell the gifts of the Holy Ghost, Acts 8 18. B. Here is a reason why he was concerned to purge it, because it was his father's house. And, A. Therefore he had authority to purge it, for he was faithful, as a son over his own house. Hebrew 3 5, 6. In calling God his father, he intimates that he was the Messiah, of whom it was said, He shall build a house for my name, and I will be his father. 2 S.A. 7 13, 14. B. Therefore he had a zeal for the purging of it, it is my father's house, and therefore I cannot bear to see it profaned, and him dishonored. Note, if God be our Father in heaven, and it be therefore our desire that his name may be sanctified, it cannot but be our grief to see it polluted. Christ's purging the temple thus may justly be reckoned among his wonderful works. Inter omnia signa qui facit dominus, hoc me ividitur esse maravilius of all Christ's wonderful works this appears to me the most wonderful hieron. Considering, a. Eh, that he did it without the assistance of any of his friends, Probably it had been no hard matter to have raised the mob, who had a great veneration for the temple, against these profaners of it, but Christ never countenanced anything that was tumultuous or disorderly. There was one to uphold, but his own arm did it. Be that he did it without the resistance of any of his enemies, either the market people themselves, or the chief priests that gave them their licenses, and had the posse templi temple force, at their command. But the corruption was too plain to be justified, sinners' own consciences are reformers' best friends, yet that was not all, there was a divine power put forth herein, a power over the spirits of men, and in this non-resistance of theirs that scripture was fulfilled, Mal 3 colon 2, 3, who shall stand when he appeareth.